Hi, I'm Al Lewis, and I'm going to show you my homemade candle pin bowling alley that I just finished constructing. This is a regulation size bowling alley, the same as a 10 pin bowling alley, a candle pin, duck pin, and 10 pin all use the same alley sizes and everything else, except for the size of the pins and the balls. Uh, this particular one, of course, most home use bowling alleys are limited by length. This is about a half length bowling alley. Other than that, it follows regulation. It has a 42 inch wide alley and uh, the two gutters, full size pin box, full size bowling pins, and the correct bowling balls. In this case, I use candle pin because our family grew up a bowling candle pin at the bowling centers and we really enjoy it. So we wanted to have one at home. Uh, this is a candle pin. Uh, the set that I bought for this bowling alley came, I think, from Maine, from a closed candle pin bowling alley. And uh, bought them off of eBay, and I bought the candle pin bowling balls off of eBay. And you can see the candle pin is symmetrical top and bottom. Uh, well, there is no top or bottom to it. It's the same either way. This particular alley was constructed with cost in mind because we're now in some of the highest cost lumber times that we've ever seen and sheets of lumber uh, uh, sheathing and flooring are very expensive. So I chose the uh, least expensive materials that would do the job. And you have to remember that a bowling alley is not a deck for a house. You're not gonna put a barbecue on it. You're not gonna put deck chairs. People aren't gonna be walking on it. It only needs to support its own weight. So in this case, I chose 7 16 OSB sheathing as the subfloor on top of a two by four ladder frame. And then I used the least expensive laminate flooring that I could find. In this case, it was 69 cents a square foot. I will show you photos of the uh, construction as it went along so you can see what I did. To help illustrate the gutter design that I did is this 2x4 is shared between half of the width supporting the alley, the sheathing and the laminate flooring, and the other half is exposed to act like a rail. So these balls will ride right along that edge there and that edge there. So all you need to do is add an outer 2x4 to the sleeper that you already have in place all the way down the length. And that way you don't have to add another piece of wood here. You only need one two by four to serve two purposes. This bowling alley does not have a return lane for the uh, ball or a ball return because I don't. that's a third gutter design that you need. It takes up space. You have to buy material for it. Uh, I figured why not just use the gutters? It's, it's really, they're there, they roll back and forth, they're free. Uh, when you're back there, you just throw the ball this way in the gutter and they all collect down here in the beginning where you can pick them up. So I eliminated the ball return altogether. First thing you do is you sweep the alley. And then the next thing is I pull all the pins in to fit inside the pit box. I return the balls. The next thing I do is I lower the pin setter. Now you notice that the pin setter is rather large and it's a rather heavy particle board, 5H particle board. This pin setter assembly here probably weighs 50 pounds. So there's no way that you're going to operate this by hand. And that way I have a, a hoist here that raises and lowers it. 
The other thing you'll notice is I'm just using standard PVC pipe, which a lot of people do for their manual pin setters, except for the ones that are far away from me that I can't reach. I'm using also plumbing pipe, but these are called plumbing Ys, W-Y-E. And if I cut a half section out of part of each Y, they actually act as a pin uh, orientation device. It turns a pin and makes it straight, and it centers it as well. I'll show you. Because of those particular holes are so far away, I can't reach them to just place them in like I can here. I need to reach like this. I just throw it and it uprights itself. Now, in practice, it goes a lot faster than that. Uh, what I've learned is that if you have two people back here, it actually goes extremely quick. You can change this thing over very, very quickly. One person stays here to load the, the, uh, the uh, pin uh, tubes, and the other person is behind the pit box just handing the pins. So that person back there would return the three balls and then just start handing pins. So it goes very, very fast. So after we do this, we just raise it up. And then we're ready. Just some miscellaneous uh, fine points is the illumination of the pins is very even if you use strip LED lighting. You can see the LED light strips go along each edge and behind the front lip here makes for a very even lighting. Right under that lip there is the light strips. Now the other fine point here is that I made this tray that raises all the pins up for pin setting so I don't have to bend over nearly as far. Let's take a look at the first hoist over here. And another detail is uh, these drawer slides right here, are just standard drawer slides. These are 24 inch long ball bearing drawer slides. They are what guide the pin setter platform straight up and down.